All right. Well, hey guys, I am so happy to see some faces on the call tonight. I know it was a um, small intimate call uh, last week, but I definitely think if you haven't checked out that recording um, to go check it out on um, emotional eating. It was definitely a great call led by Anne and I know I took a lot away from it personally in my own experiences. So um, definitely check that out. I wanted to, um, I had a couple like things to talk about on emotional eating and um, the joys of PMS and all of that. And um, if there's anything that um, kind of towards the end of that, if you guys want to chat and you know talk about some successes and wins from this past week, um, definitely feel free to unmute yourself and jump on to that. So um, again, like I said, last week we did a really good call on um, emotional eating. And I will say one of the things that I am learning more doing this program is um, not, I, I shared in the last call, I'm very much an all or nothing kind of person when it comes to trying to reach my goals, trying to reach my weight loss goals. And one of the things I'm loving about this new lift program is that he allows us to not deprive ourselves. You know, he gives us that opportunity to cheat or treat having that one day to um, enjoy something that we really like, have that glass of wine, have that pizza, whatever it is. Um, and I think that is something that's really helping me now I'm only into the second week of this program but it's allowing me to not feel so restricted but also still get a handle on my nutrition so I definitely think that that has been really helpful um, if you are if you are doing the program lift it's definitely a great um, thing and it definitely incorporates to be mindset as well so you are still able to track your food and to um, get a handle on your nutrition but also still, be able to enjoy some of those things that you love without feeling so deprived. And, and I am the classic emotional eater. You know, I tend to, when I'm feeling stressed or hormonal, all of, all of those emotions, that's what I choose. Food is, that's my weakness. So, um, I don't know if any of you guys can relate to that or if you have certain, um, emotional triggers, but I will say having that, having this program and giving me the, that opportunity to, um, not feel so deprived has really, has really been helpful. So I don't know if anybody has any, any experiences with that, or if to be mindset has allowed them to, um, you know, has, has helped with, um, emotional eating or stress eating. Um, if there's, if that's something that you guys have experienced. <clears throat> no, just me. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. All right. Well, if you guys think of anything or want to type it in um, the chat box, feel free to do so. Um, I know it's it's a it's a pretty common thing um, for a lot of people to um, stress eat or, um, you know, when they're having something going on in their life, you know, that's that might be something that they turn to. So um, the, the other thing that I wanted to chat about is um, our lovely menstrual cycles. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is a topic. There's no guys on the call, is there? Because that can be awkward. Um, so last week, I actually had asked a question to Jenna because um, I was on my period, and I was like, I don't understand. I gained two pounds from yesterday, and I have been completely on track. Water's been good. I mean, I, my nutrition's on point. I don't understand and. You know, we, we know, yes, we, we bloat, we hold water, all of this stuff. Well, um, Alana did a great video in a group that I um, am in, a, a test group, and basically talking about that, you know, it's very common. Many women are going to gain two, maybe some people even gain up to like five pounds um, while they're on their cycle. Um, <laughs> but it's so important to be able to know that you have to be okay with it. The scale is, if you're, if you're using the scale every day, it's again, it's used as a tool to measure your progress, but know that if you are staying consistent, if you're drinking your water, um, if you are on track with your nutrition, that most likely that weight is going to fall right back off, you know, once you're 
in the midst of your period or, or right afterwards. And I think for me, I'm so, um, it's again, something that I continue to work on. I have, I've been so fixated on the scale for such a long time that, um, when I saw that, I was like, Jenna, like what, what's going on? Um, but it's, it's something that I think we all, you know, deal with. And I think it's really important to remember that our body is trying to compensate for everything that's going on. And it's really important to just know that if we continue to focus on water, proper nutrition, you know, that, that it's, it's, it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't know if anybody, whether it's, their cycle, or maybe it's lack of sleep and they've noticed something shift because lack of sleep can play um, a role into possible weight gain and things like that. If you've seen that um, in your journey thus far, and if you have any um, comments or experiences um, that maybe um, you can relate to what I had just shared. <clears throat> well, I haven't had a menstrual cycle in three years. But with that being said, I still get the symptoms that I had when I was in my menstrual cycle still now. Mm -hmm. At the same time, my menstrual cycle was always on time, on point, always throughout my whole life. And it's still, I know exactly when I should be having it because I still get the bloating, I still gain the weight, I still have the mood swings and everything. So even during menopause, you still experience that same thing you're talking phenomenon I call it oh. you're talking about. And I crave chocolate. My thing is chocolate, 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 especially around that time of the month. Sure. Um, I thought all that would go away during menopause, but you know, after you're done with your cycles and stuff, but it, it for me it has not. And I still know when my cycle was there. So I don't know about the other older ladies that are on here with us but um, do you notice when you're when you're checking your when you're checking every morning and you're using the scale as a tool or do you when you ha are having those symptoms do you notice any fluctuation in the scale or is it just more oh, symptoms yeah, like right before like my PMS you know right before I would normally have my cycle two to three days before I'd be the bloating and once the cycle came and went through it then that was all gone so it was only there for maybe two or three days mm -hmm. the weight gain yeah. yeah, I'd be back to where I was. Yeah, and that's really what she was talking about in the video. You know, we're like you said, you crave chocolate. You, often people crave like salt, salty foods, or mm -hmm. they're retaining blood, they're retaining water, and you can be eating perfectly, um, but overnight see that you know that weight gain or that not that the scale change. But again, it it will eventually just go back down after your body does its thing. So yes. yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that, Donna. Uh, anybody else? <clears throat> There's um, like. Oh, oh go, go ahead. No, go ahead, Sarah. You're good. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say, like this week, um, related to the stress eating too. Like I've had a lot of um, things going on, just like in my personal life, that nothing bad, but that's put a whole lot of extra stress on me that I don't usually have. Um, one of them is my my um, I would I had my daughter's birthday party on Saturday and it's not, it's not a bad stress, but I just had a lot of things that I was doing. And when you said something about um, not getting enough sleep, I just wanted to share that the night before her party, I was up way, way later than like even a normal late for me, um, like, like two o'clock in the morning late, because I was just finishing up a bunch of stuff. Like I'm, I'm really big into like, like making a lot of stuff. And, and so I was just finishing up the things for the party and the next morning, like the scale jumped up and I was really shocked because I hadn't really gone off track during the day, but, um, like the scale was really up. But then I thought about that, like, really, I really haven't had a lot of sleep and that might really be playing a role. And by the next day it was right back down where it was. It was like, it just was just strange. And I just, I don't know if it was related to that, just being up so late and not getting enough sleep or why it did that jump, but I just thought I would share that just because um, it was just a little weird. Yeah, and I think um, that's why it's, again, when we're using our tracker to track our food, there's an op, there's something in the right corner where it's, it, you're, you can, how many hours of sleep did you get the night before? And um, I don't know if you guys are writing that down, but again, that can also be a good way to tell, okay, am I, 
Am I getting enough sleep? Did I have a, a poor night's sleep? Could that play into why you know my body is responding this way? Um, so I really encourage you to to track that as well in your tracker. Um, and again, Alana talks about in one of her videos. Um, I, I strive for six to seven. I, I'm happy when I get six. I think that's a good um, amount of sleep for me. But she really focuses on a minimum of seven is what she had said. Um, and what I often see is when I don't sleep well, um, I am low energy. So I crave foods that give me energy, which is carbs. Um, so I'm often wanting more carbs. Um, and I think that the important thing is, is if we, we don't get a good night's sleep for whatever reason, life happens, maybe you're up with a sick child or you just, you know, your mind's wandering and you're up for whatever reason, you know, to really focus on drinking a lot of water the next day to try to keep you full. Um, and then to really, if you're going to go for those carbs, try to go for those fiber filled carbs, like that, like higher fiber, low sugar. And one of the things she recommended was like the beach bar would be a, a great, you know, snack option um, for that as well. But it's definitely something to really keep track of and keep an eye on because sleep is definitely something that could play into kind of the measurement there. So thank you for sharing that, Sarah. Jenna, did you have something you wanted to share? Um, yeah, I have five seconds while there's no barking. <laughs> um, back on like the hysterectomy and the menopause and all of that. So your body, like, um, there's a whole section, like when you're getting certified as a personal trainer that covers like the woman's anatomy, right. And like how the woman's body cycle works. Um, and it talks about like how your body, even though like for hysterectomies, like even though you have everything removed, like your body still goes through its own cycle. Like it doesn't shed like a uterine lining and all of that, but like it still feels like it's on a 28 to whatever, 30 day cycle. So your body still has all the symptoms except for the period. Um, and so like, it's typically, it's so normal to like retain a whole bunch of water and like to, to swell up and, and to go through kind of all the same symptoms. So it's interesting though, like that even without, without all the parts, <laughs> like the body still treats it the same way. So that's why I always tell people when they're like, well, I haven't had a period. I'm like, yeah, but your body still will go through that same cycle. So if you have like a weird time of the month where you're like, why is the scale up? Like that it may be that your body is doing what it would have done, like if it had all the parts. <laughs> um, and then on Sarah's sleep thing, like that's absolutely something that can happen because remember, like when we sleep, our body, like that's our time for our body to repair itself, to detox itself, to kind of cleanse itself and get it, you know, like there's so much work that happens in your body while it's sleeping. Um, and when you don't do that, like your body doesn't detox a lot of the crap or the, I don't want to say crap, but toxins and things that are in it, like that first pee that you have in the morning, it's always like, yikes, you know, because you haven't, you haven't hydrated yet. And it's like getting rid of everything that it cleaned out um, while you were sleeping and filled your bladder with, like, that's a great example of like, okay, well, if your body doesn't get enough sleep, it doesn't get to do the, all the processes that it does. Like, so think of your body, like, um, I use windows cause I don't like any kind of Apple products. So we'll use windows like on the computer as an example, <laughs> like when you have to do a windows update, um, and you, make it start on your computer, but then you stop it in the middle. Like your computer's not going to operate the way that it should because you stopped the process in the middle of it. Um, so your body is kind of the same way overnight. It gets to kind of upgrade um, everything and get you set up for the next day, repair the muscles, flush toxins, do all those things. And when you sleep less, your body doesn't do that. So guess what? It holds on to all that stuff. And it's like, okay, well the next time I go to like, we go into sleep mode, we'll finish the process. But you don't go back to sleep. You work like you live all day, right? Like awake and functioning and doing stuff. So then it has to kind of make up for double time the next night. So it's really, really like, I'm so glad you brought like sleep up, Caitlin, because you guys know, like I preach that you need to have sleep because that's the time that your body really gets to take care of itself. So any kind of lack of sleep, like they say less than seven hours, like your body doesn't get to do the entire reboot process. So the scale will go up. Well, I average about four and a half hours of sleep every night. Oh, she's lying. She's in bed at like 7 p.m., y'all. Don't even listen to her. But I'm not asleep. No, seriously, I do because I'm up and up and then the dogs are barking and they got to pee and then I get up and let them out and then I can't go back to sleep and then I got to get up at 4.30 to go to class, you know. So, yeah, I average about four and a half hours. So that's probably why I'm always so bitchy. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything, God. <laughs>
<laughs> well, maybe you should, once you get off here, go to sleep and let your husband take out the dogs tonight. I <laughs> but I think, well, with the sleep and the, the PMS and all of that, that is two things that I have really noticed. Um, just even, I mean, I even tracked on my, like on my tracker, like just so I could see like, okay, like I am spot on with my nutrition, but the scale went up. Oh, I only got three hours of sleep this night because it was just a bad night of sleep and the scale went up a little bit. So it's just a really great way to, to again, the importance of really using that tracker as a tool to kind of see, okay, this is, and it's a way for you to not get as, as frustrated. You know the reason why it's that way. And then the next morning you can say, okay, it's a new day. You know, I'm back on track. Like I can, I can really focus and um, regroup for, for the next day ahead. So I definitely think those are great things to add on to your tracker along with the, the foods that you're eating each day. Do you find that when you are stressed or you don't have as much sleep that your body, like I find that I drink the same amount of water pretty much every day, but if I don't sleep well or I'm under stress, I don't, I don't rid myself of it. So I, that's a lot of the weight gain on the scale too. I, I noticed that my body does that since I've been tracking. I noticed that I don't pee as often if I'm under stress and stuff either. I would say stress definitely plays a, a role into it as well. Um, I, I know, well, I don't know for, for you guys, but for me, I think it's, it's um, part of it. Um, I think sleep and, and for me, the, the hormones and all of that. Um, but yeah, I think stress, and I don't know if Jenna, Jenna being the personal trainer could maybe add into that. I think it, that definitely is something that part of you're, you're putting stress on your body, you're, you know, mentally exhausted. Like, I think it definitely plays a role into, um, your journey. <laughs> yeah. You have to think of it the same way as like, um, when you're stressed out, your cortisol levels are sort of scattered. Um, so hormone levels are thrown off when you're stressed out. So the same thing when you're period comes and your hormone levels are screwed up, you retain water, same kind of idea. So yeah, your, your body kind of goes into fight or flight. So it, it handles the water the same way. It just holds on to it. It doesn't let you let go of it as easily as when you're moving and, and fine. That's why working out and stuff like that is so good because it kind of usually will help like level out those hormones. Mm -hmm. So you're not as stressed. One of the things that my trainer had me do that I think is a great idea for you guys to do, and I'll share this in the group as well. When I was competing, my trainer had me for seven days track my sleep, um, which we should be tracking that anyway for this group. So it's really going to be easy for you guys to do. But for seven nights, track my sleep exactly to the minute, like how much sleep I got, um, which all of you that have the fancy watches can do that um, or the tracker Fitbit things. Um, so you guys could all do that, but to track it to the minute. Um, and take the average over the seven days and figure out what that is. But look at each day, like every morning when you wake up, note, like restful sleep, not restful sleep. Don't use your fit thing to, to tell you if you had restful sleep or not, like actually how you physically feel. Like, did I have restful sleep? Was I awake? Did I toss and turn a lot? Was it a short night of sleep? Whatever. And like track that over the course of seven days, figure out what the average time is and figure out which nights you had the best sleep. Like time wise and that's like your sweet spot like so for me I know six hours and 36 minutes is my sweet spot I learned that very quickly like in the process of doing the seven day of tracking and for me like I make sure that every night when I go to sleep like my alarm is set so that it has at least six minutes and or six minutes dear lord six hours and 36 minutes of sleep because I know like that's where I will operate at like my highest functioning level and be successful during the day so like figure that out for yourself and what that sweet spot is plus I know that that's like the minimum amount of sleep I can get and be good to go so that's sort of how I base then what time I set my alarm what time I go to sleep all of those things around that because that means my body's functioning at its best level. So I challenge all of you to, to do that. It was really insightful for me and I didn't even think anything of it. And that's when my trainer started teaching me all about the levels in your body and how everything works. So sleep is like the key to everything. Um, and so, oops, sorry, Anne, go ahead. No, I was just going to add on what Jenna said about the Fitbit trackers. Um, cause I think, or any tracker really, I say Fitbit cause that's what I have. Um, 
but she makes a really good point about not just paying attention to what, like how the Fitbit says you slept. Um, because like yesterday, my Fitbit told me, I don't even remember the numbers. I'd have to look, but, um, like it said, I slept more yesterday as compared to, um, like last night's sleep and last night's sleep, I felt I slept a ton better. Um, and it's funny that you had said that Jenna, cause I looked at it this morning. I was like, well, I feel like I slept a ton better last night than the night before. So just because like your tracker says that you slept X amount or that like, Oh, Hey, you had a good night's sleep. Like don't necessarily rely on that. Like go by how you felt. So while mine probably said that I slept like, I don't know, six hours and 26 minutes last night, I still felt like it was more rested than the seven hours that I got the previous night. So um, I definitely think that's a good piece to add in when you're tracking your sleep as well. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. So um, how accurate are all these Fitbits? Because, you know, I, I was, we were talking to you Jen, the other day about the macro thing. And I went on to um, this uh, trainer does the macros and did the macro calculator and everything matched up. The carbs matched up and the fat matched up on my Fitbit, but the protein didn't. The protein said 63 grams on my Fitbit and on that calculator said 163 grams. So how do you know which is reliable and what isn't? I mean, and then also on the uh, calculator said I should be doing 1600 calories. My Fitbit says I should be doing 1290 calories. So what's right and what's not right? <laughs> That's a good question and it takes a really loaded answer. Um, all of them are going to be different. And I know that that sounds like a terrible answer, but the Fitbits are designed based on math equations. Like the, the Fitbits are like, hi, I'm this much weight. This is what I like how my height is. And like the, they're just give you a generic number based on the specific things that you put in. Um, on the actual program. There are so many like other calculations that you can figure out. What I tell a lot of my like individual like personal training science is to figure out what fits best for you. Like if you have done it the way that the Fitbit says and you're not getting results and you're not seeing things like the success that you want, then go to another equation. Try that. See if the, you're getting the results that you want. See if it's a little bit different. I mean, the fact that something's 100 grams off that's a question of the equations that we're using. Um, yeah, like, I'm, I'm punch, I punched in the exact same numbers, the same weight, the same height. I punched in the exact same numbers on both of them. And that yeah. was the protein was the only one that was off. Because on the other one's like 20% protein, 30% the Fitbit says, you know, which came up to those grams that I described earlier. But, right. I, you know, I just don't know. I'm confused by the whole thing. And I, I, I just don't know, you know. Yeah, you and I can go. <laughs> yeah, you and I can go through that um, and break that down a little bit more individually. But okay. it shouldn't be a hundred grams off, especially hundred grams of protein. Like that's a significant. That's a big yes, deal. It is. Yeah. <laughs> that's and a it's huge funny deal. that it's exactly one hundred grams because it's it's exactly a hundred grams difference because okay. one's sixty three and one's one hundred sixty three. And I looked at it ten times to make sure I was looking at it correctly, and that's what it is. Yeah, we'll look at that um, together. If you want to send me your exact numbers that you input, I'll tell you what you should be at. Okay. Okay. Good question. But yeah, the Fitbit trackers, they're, for the most part, they're pretty darn accurate um, in regards to like measuring steps and miles and all of that good stuff. Um, when yeah, because the calories were off too. I mean, it said 400 calories more, 1,600 calories, and the Fitbit says 1,290 calories, you know, so... Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know what, I don't know what that difference is there either with the calories. Mm -hmm. And then you said too, I think you told me that if I was, because sometimes I meet my macros before my calories are up, but I still have like another four or 500 calories I'm supposed to be eating, but I've already done all my macros. Right. So what do you do? You know, what do you do there? Am I supposed to eat for the 400 calories? Because sometimes a Fitbit, if you don't eat all the calories, they will not complete your diary for the end of the day and tell you what you did. And that pisses me off. Well, so that I, is just like I, gotta, I gotta go eat an ice cream cone so I can get my damn diary complete. Well, I can tell you that's probably not what it's encouraging. <laughs> it's peace, man. Oh, Lord. But you know what? You have to remember two macros. And, and when you're doing a macro equation, typically they don't act, like factor in physical activity. 
the Fitbit figure like figures in physical activity because that's one of the things you have to select like when you're setting up your Fitbit or your fitness pal like you put in there like your workouts and stuff so when you're figuring out macros usually that's not a part of the equation so, so should I take the fitness part out of my out of that then should I not ha add the fit the exercise part into that so it'd be closer you want, you want the exercise part okay so I want those extra calories it's giving me yes okay that's your body properly yeah okay you want Cool. Um, so I didn't have anything else. I didn't know if anybody had any questions or wanted to um, maybe share a win from this week or a goal that they're um, working on this upcoming week. Um, and then we can get off and get some sleep. <laughs> Nine days without a beer. That's a huge That's win, ladies. A huge win. Way to go. God damn. Awesome job. That was very exciting. Is there like a slow clap coming from somewhere? <laughs> that mean you had more chocolate? <laughs> no, ma'am. I've been a very good girl until today. Today was a, today was a bad day because I'm with Caitlin. I do the stress eating, and this morning my basement floor was all damp and wet from the rain, not all that moisture we had. So I got all that cleaned up and did my workout and then went to work. And of course the whole shop's torn apart because we're remodeling. So I had to clean all that and then get everything upstairs organized. And then I had contractors coming in looking at stuff we were doing. So I ate a donut and then one donut led to two donuts and, and you know, shit just rolled down from there. So it wasn't a good day for eating. I had a bad day. But we track it, right? Did you put it on your tracker? Yes, and I'm not very, I don't like it at all. <laughs> Tomorrow's a new day. Beer. And I'm saying this for me too, because I've had those days and I'm, I get on the scale and I'm like, well, I know exactly why this is the oh, way it is. Oh yeah, my, my fat's like double than what it's supposed to be and the calories, I, you know, I'm minus 1300 calories. So yeah, it was not a good day. Not a good day. And then I felt like I really didn't work out this morning because I only had eight and 10 pound weights here because all my weights are at the, at the studio. So when I did lift, it was with the eight pounds and 10 pounds. So I felt like I really didn't get a, a workout, you know? You can make that up tomorrow. Don't you yeah, worry. We'll see you in the morning. <laughs> well, then, see, and now I'm worried because Wednesday is my surgery. So I won't be able to lift anything for 10 days. So well, I got we'll coming up. So that's, that's stressful. So thinking about that is stressful. Yeah, but the one thing that you can control when you have surgery is what you eat. So that oh becomes God. your workout, working out exactly what you eat. Did you not hear what I ate today and I was under stress? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I don't know. Makes the ten, next 10 days going to be better. Oh, we're going to make sure they're better. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, guys. So we have about nine minutes left. Does anybody want to share... Any, any other wins or any goals that they have for the week ahead? Hey, Barb, do you want to share anything? <laughs> poor, poor Barb. <laughs> Barb started Lyft today. That's a huge Yay! one. I saw Good her come job. in. Barb started Lyft at the 630 class today. Nice job, awesome. Barb. What did you think? Did you like it? Oh, she's oh, muted. i got to unmute you. Caitlin, you can unmute her. Oh, shoot. Let Caitlin unmute you real quick. <laughs> Where do I do that? Click oh, on her. Oh. On her. <laughs> Not letting me. There we go. Oh, there. There, Barb. We can hear you now. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did love it. My arms were shaking by the end, but, um, I, you know, it, it was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. So. How does your I body feel now? How does my body feel now? Yeah. Um, pretty good. Yeah, I'm, I'm not like in massive pain or anything. So <laughs> we'll see how I feel in the morning when I wake up. But <laughs> no, I did okay. That's awesome. Yeah. That's a big win. Love it. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Anybody else? Any goals for this week that they want to share that we can keep, keep you accountable? No. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all I had. Um, if you guys have anything else that you think of, feel free to post it in the group or message us and we will see you guys next week. Make sure you guys see you tomorrow.
Yep. Bye. We'll see you tomorrow, bright and early. <laughs> oh, geez. Bye guys. Bye.